Well, okay, everyone, welcome to our second call of the day, Winder Lions and Eddie Stone. And this... The second, reboot times two. The reboot times two. We are going to be discussing something that I think is going to be of interest to everybody, and that is how do you reduce inflammation in your body with food? What is, how do you define and describe and have a, a diet that is, oh, I hate to say inflammatory, but anti-inflammatory diet? And then I want to get into talking a little bit about our, our, our 10 day challenge and describe what that's all about. Cause that's something that's real fun and, uh, I think it's a perfect time of year for anybody who wants to lose weight and get themselves tuned up to start with. So that's what we got on for, for this chat. So here we go, sir. Uh, well, I'm excited about this out and I'll be candid. I mean, this puts me a little bit on my soapbox because I have some deep beliefs in this. Don't let me forget the winder before this is over to discuss how to get a free uh, transformation pack. And this is for anybody that hears this, whether you're a new customer or an existing member, we have an ongoing offer to earn a uh, free transformation pack. So just don't let me forget to come back to that. But all right, one of my basic premises, um, and for those that are on social media, you've probably seen that my daughter and I are doing a, a, a 10 day transformation challenge uh, right now. And so if you go to my page, you can sort of watch and, and, and see what we're doing there. But one of my uh, big beliefs um, in why people are healthy or not healthy, other than things that are just fundamentally obvious. You take people that uh, have consciously tried to reduce their consumption of, of ultra processed foods compared to someone that just takes whatever food is available and just give that a few months, a few years, a decade or two, and just look at the difference in those persons and sort of the those people that just have this ultra processed food lifestyle, they just look swollen. They look bloated. Why, why would that be? What, what, explain the mechanism that, you know, someone's eating and all of a sudden the body is blowing up. Why would that happen? Well, there are several reasons. One is ultra processed food isn't necessarily going to be a, that, that end product, you know, whatever that happens to be, whether it's a, a hamburger bun at a, a fast food place or chips that you uh, buy on the aisle. All of those things are ultra processed foods. And so they're devoid of those native uh, fibers and enzymes and uh, micronutrients that make food recognizable to the body. Mm -hmm. And so literally you can make a, a, a powerful argument that the ultra processed foods where essentially they've stripped away sort of what we recognize to be flour, for example. It's not, we're not talking about stone ground milled um, back in the day where they just ground up some wheat or whatever it is to make flour. We're talking about something where everything's been pulled apart, maybe a few things added back. And so when it comes back, it's, it's like a, a, a chemical experience uh, experiment and the, and the body doesn't necessarily know what it is. And so one of the immediate reactions the body has to things it doesn't recognize is to surround them with a, a essentially parts of your immune system, which create inflammation, neutrophils principally, because it's, it's like, hey, I don't know what we got here. And so we're worried about it. We, we don't necessarily want this to cause harm or damage to our DNA. And so we'll surround this with some inflammation. It's, it's an inflammatory response until we can either tuck it away, s store it somewhere in a yellow fat, or try to get rid of it through your bowel. And, you know, I'm reducing a very um, scientifically intense um, reaction to just a, a simple description, but that's really, that's what's taking place here. And, and look, you can see it when you look in the mirror. You spend four or five days on the road just eating fast food and look at yourself if normally you have meals that you prepare at home, you invest some time and energy into the prep of your food and what you're eating isn't um, uh, necessarily ultra processed and you'll see the difference. It doesn't take long for this to show up. You're not going to bloat with broccoli. You are not going to bloat with broccoli. That's yeah. exactly right. And, uh, you know, that happens to be, we've got a nice blog article about the superfoods that help out with inflammation and, and guess what? Broccoli's one of them. Right. And so, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a lifestyle choice and I'm sympathetic 
not sympathetic. I take that back. I'm empathetic to the plight of people that because of schedule, they just can't invest as much time in what they eat. You know what? Um, I understand that, but if you want to be as healthy as you can, you want to be a good example to your family and others, you got to do something. You got to find time for either meal prep or thinking about it before you go to bed or just not eat as much. Because if you just take food as what's available in your life throughout the day, then what you're going to eat is all ultra processed foods and, and your health is going to suffer. Your risk of degenerative diseases, cancer, cardiovascular disease, developing diabetes are all going to accelerate. You're not going to like how you look when you look in the mirror. And so if, if you're a person that's dissatisfied with where you're at at the start of 2019, but you just can't kind of get your head around the idea of jumping on a diet, which is fine by me, at least try to think about the sourcing of your food and how processed it is. And can you, if you're eating three processed meals a day, can you get it down to one? What can you do to have that food be less processed so that you don't have these inflammatory responses? There's other benefits that are going to come from it, but this is a real critical thing and probably as much an issue as it's associated with um, people that are inflamed with higher risk of cardiovascular disease and they're gaining weight, it's ultra processed food. You know, it's, it's almost a stretch to call it food. You know, the food sort of implies nutrition. This is just something that fills you up so you don't feel hungry. But, you know, if someone's really overweight in China, they say they are malnourished. Yeah. And we should say that too. I mean, it, look, this is just all how we're culturally sensitive. And so in our country, we'd probably have a hard time saying that, but it's manufactured food, right? It's man-made food. And, and, you know, it's all about profit margins and making calories cheap. That's very valued in this country. I mean, it's valued at a regulatory level, right? And so it's, it's, it's all about quantity. Those empty calories, um, they're short in people's lives. Yeah, and and they, they engineer them to be addictive, they do engineer them to be addictive, both with uh, streams of fat, types of fat, as well as uh, sugars. I mean, there's, there's some great stories out there, not great, kind of sadly humorous stories about kids getting addicted to types of Doritos, right? Because of the way the flavor profiles worked for them or soft drinks. You, you, you know, to find somebody drinking six or seven soft drinks a day, they can't give it up. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's not the caffeine because they're set their substitutes for that. Mm -hmm. It's that flavor profile, the way it hits them. It's the ritual of it. It's the habit. And so it's very much habit forming. And that's, you know, that's what uh, big food is counting on. So sometimes you just have to do uh, an interrupt program to break the cycle of eating things that are inflammatory. Uh, and I would Add that probably eating too much uh, uh, meat, particularly red meat, and maybe uh, excess or drinking milk or other things with high amounts of pesticides and and uh, uh, chemicals uh, would contribute to that. Uh, so this leads into the to what you're suggesting, which I am now doing. Thank you very much. Thank you. This this ten day challenge thing. Describe what it is and the benefits and why you think it's important and how this came about. Sure. And, and let me just make a quick comment about something you just said. If the principal source of the protein in your diet, um, most of the day, three meals a day, is animal protein, such as, as dairy, uh, dairy milk, or um, animal steaks, chicken, whatever it happens to be, you're going to struggle to get ahead of the, the inflammation game because the way the body processes animal proteins is quite different. That's not to say that you can't have a fairly healthy life if there's some animal protein in your diet, setting aside all the other discussions that might come with that. But if that is the dominant source of protein in your, in your life, you're going to be inflamed. And you might get away with it in your teens, in your 20s, and early 30s, but that is going to catch up and raise your risk of the vascular disease in a way that you don't want. So we just ask you to invest some time in educating yourself and really learning that uh, three meats a day is not a good plan for living as long as you want to. And so just we'll leave that there. So the transformation program, and for our members, if you go onto the site, you look on the shop page, 
there's a transformation pack uh, that's available. And that pack is a super green juice, a uh, organic super protein, and a boost. And if you don't um, like caffeine, and so you want to do something without caffeine, then you can get the recovery pack, which is the same um, combination, except we substitute out boost for green energy. So we're recognized that there's different people who have different approaches with that. But for me, here's how I use it. I, I, I mean, I did pick up probably five or six pounds during the fall when my elbow was hurt. Just didn't exercise like I normally did. And probably because my elbow was hurt, sort of indulged myself and said, oh, I deserve that extra cookie or whatever it is. And so when I did the, or decided to jump in with Sawyer and do the transformation challenge uh, at the start of the year, some of it was because I wanted to get a jump start on getting back, you know, a little leaner than I am currently. But I would have done it regardless if my weight hadn't changed because I do believe in trying to hit the reset button. And I'm like anybody else, uh, during the holiday season, everywhere you go, there's good food, it's rich food. And so you get a little carried away maybe. And so it's nice to, you know, take, take a, a, a break from all those wonderfully prepared foods. But for me, I believe in the value of a sprint. Mm -hmm. You know, I, I like the chance to uh, get myself out of breath for a few days. And I'm one of those people, and I think most people are, that if I can really see it, like it's just 10 days I need to make these sacrifices, I can do that. Mm -hmm. But for 10 days, by doing that, what happens is, and, and the majority of people that we work with that communicate with us about using the pack, you know, they lose between six and eight pounds during that 10 days. Man, that is motivating. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. super motivating, right? And so much easier than for them to see themselves adopting a new set of habits. And I'm not trying to turn anybody's world upside down uh, in the near term here, right? I don't, you know, want somebody to think, well, I'm going to have to be a vegan now for the rest of my life. That's a, a lot. If you've been eating uh, three meats uh, uh, at different meals throughout the day, you know, that's a lot to jump on. But for 10 days, all you do is you substitute breakfast and lunch for me. Now, you could substitute dinner instead or however you want to do it. But I'm substituting two meals that I would normally eat. Uh, with a shake in the morning and a shake at lunch and then a sensible meal in the evening. And I'll even try to make sure uh, I'm a little more disciplined about making sure my exercise happens. But by doing that, uh, I'm going to give my body a little break. You know, uh, the, those first two meals are so much easier to digest. My digestive system is going to get a little bit of break. And so most people then would see results enough that they would like, you know what, I'm going to try to embrace some new lifestyles. After that, once you get that initial start, um, you know, then you can say to yourself, you know what, I'm going to try to have a vegan breakfast every day, right? You just make some, some steps, some sacrifice from the ultra processed foods that you're used to, to get yourself pointed in the right direction. And if that's all you ever do, then that's fantastic. And for some people, like I know Alan Newell, he is currently – uh, doing a transformation challenge. He told me he's going to do it for the next 10 days, take about a three or four day break, and then he's going to do a second pack mm. because he feels like he really needs to do a strong jump start uh, to get the year going. So to, to mention everybody where the free pack comes into play, so and you can contact our support and they will send these details and winder. You could even contact them. They'll send them to you if you want to put them in your show notes. But essentially – um, if you go on the transformation challenge and you video chronicle your journey, and so basically either through Facebook Live, which is probably preferred, or uh, through Instagram Live, you go on and just share your story with us every day. It doesn't have to be long. It can be just a couple minutes. Say, hey, folks, I'm starting to know you here, trying to uh, create some new habits, and so I'm going to be replacing my breakfast and my lunch, and just tell people what you're doing. You can make it as short or entertaining as you want to make a common comment about it. But if you do that and, and you make that information available to us, like, so we know, and there's some hashtags that you can use, then regardless of your results, when it's all over, we'll send you another pack for free. Oh, no great. questions asked, right? We want to support the people that are making that effort. And if you're not used to Facebook or Instagram, Find a young person in your life. They'll help you learn how to do this. Almost every phone you've got out there will give you the chance to go live. But we, we want you to be public with this for the support you're going to receive. And most of you would be that haven't ever done anything like this. Most of you are going to be just completely floored and shocked 
by how your friends jump in and say, hey, I'm so proud of you, or I'm excited for you, or I'm thinking about doing this too, or whatever it happens to be. So we want to get our community involved uh, with this idea and bring awareness to them uh, about this subject matter. And so what I do, if people watch the videos we have, is I try to give them a tip that I've learned along the way, explain what we're doing, and, uh, and invite people to, to join us, right? And so this is all a part of building a healthy community. It can have positive impl implications for your business, but really this is more about the community, letting people know what you're doing, what your brand is. And so we, uh, I encourage people to take advantage. I mean, it's a free pack. Those packs are $149. It'd be nice to have a second one for free. And that's just a one-time thing. It's not a perpetual. Every time you do it, you get a new one. It is not perpetual. It's just a one-time thing, but it is a good, <laughs> solid investment. Yes, that is. That's fantastic. So, um, so the, the inflammatory diet, uh, if, you're, if you're looking for a way to really break that habit, it seems to me that this 10-day challenge is pretty much going to be it. And you can have just a regular meal at night, so it's not like you're going to fast for 10 days or you know, stand in the corner and wail and beat yourself, you you know, you can, you know, have a decent meal in the evening. Just don't I don't even it, care. Right? I don't even care if people go a little overboard at night, right? Just go overboard with good food uh, because eventually that'll, that'll get under control, right? So I'm not, I'm not so worried about that. It's just bringing a new dynamic uh, to your lifestyle of being thoughtful about it. So if you go and uh, look on our blog for the anti-inflammatory suggestions, you're, these, are, these are not going to surprise anybody, right? But, but blueberries, right? Can you incorporate blueberries into your diet? It's one of the richest superfoods out there. It's so many antioxidants, it has anti-inflammatory quality. Turmeric, right? So I, I think we probably at this point all know about turmeric, certainly the uh, lifeblood of our wellspring product, right? That's anti-inflammatory. If blueberries and turmeric are a part of your diet, if broccoli which we talked about earlier is a part of your diet, walnuts. And we could really say that for almost any raw nut. And, and cooked nuts are okay, but if those fats can be uncooked and raw, they're more accessible and easier to digest. A green leafy vegetables, any, any dark green leafy vegetable you could eat is going to support your body in terms of controlling inflammation, but also support uh, detox. You know, if, you're, if you have a heavy uh, green leafy based diet and you're using our pure body products, I'm pretty confident that you're going to be detoxed, right? That's a great investment into yourself. Uh, pineapple. Uh, pineapple has enzymes, bromelain uh, particularly, that can help the body in sort of breaking down inflammation, getting rid of excess uh, neutrophil migration um, that's really sort of responsible for what we see when someone looks like they're puffy. Uh, celery can also help out with this. It helps to reduce the amount of sort of fluid, right? So it's a, it, it helps the body detox in way. Beets, which we know can help to support the production of nitrous oxide. And then finally, ginger. But these are just the beginning. You know, explore and create your own list of anti-inflammatory foods to, to drive into your diet. It doesn't take long um, for this to all of a sudden be like, what was I thinking? because I've got so much more energy. I'm resting better. Just so many benefits, but you just got to jump in. Don't be scared. You know, on one of our videos, we talked about using the CBD oil and some people are a little scared, right? Because of whatever their historic thoughts are about cannabis. I think the same thing is true here. You just got to jump in and not be scared. And these, and the shakes are delicious. They you are. know, I've done a lot of shakes over the years and, and, and man, having to gag a maggot through some of those are just this is really good. I was blown hey, we away. We pride ourselves on taste, right? I mean, if you don't like it, then that kind of taste fatigue means you're not going to be a good consumer. And so we're, you know, we know that. One more time about the chickpea, about the uh, pea protein. If somebody doesn't digest that well, what was it you said they should add to that to, to make it to, uh, easier to handle? No, it's what we add to it. So because we know for some people, pea protein is difficult to digest, that pea protein in our super organic super protein is combined with fermented rice. And that fermented rice, that uh, foundational enzymes that you find there helps to break down the pea as well. And I haven't had anybody 
uh, tell me they've had digestive issues. And we've, I mean, we've got thousands and thousands and thousands of people that have used that organic super protein and just haven't had anybody talk about gas or bloating. We add enzymes and then you've got the, the native things that would be coming from the uh, fermented rice protein. So I mean, give it a try. Look, if you're dissatisfied, everything's guaranteed. But I think folks will be really impressed with how it digests. Fantastic. So 10 day challenge. Here we go. Get on board everyone. So am I going to see you going to Facebook live? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Now do I do that on the company side or on my own Facebook page? I don't know what. So contact support and they're going to send you what you need. That will include hashtags. You go live on your site, but you've got those hashtags in there. So we're going to get to see it and it makes it easier to find. You can even go look at the tags I have in my post. Uh-huh. And harvest those and just copy and paste if you want to. I don't have a teenager in the household. These, this is another world. Are you kidding me? I've seen Lynn. She looks like a teenager. <laughs> She's going to love that one. All right, sir. Well, that's just brilliant stuff. Anything else you want to add here is, uh, at the end? Let's go out there and make 2019 the best year any of us have ever had. Your that's best it. self, right? Yeah. Because it's clear to me that Governments aren't going to do it. Corporations aren't going to do it. It's all up to us, right? We can do this for ourselves and our family and create an example and a a legacy of uh, what happens when you really get serious about your best self. I love that. Be your best self. This is the year of the best self. I like it. Get on board. Okay, everyone. Thanks, Eddie. Thank you, Winder. Bye-bye now.